Today we're going to be having a look at three cases where the main characters in these cases they are seemingly very saintly people desiring to remain totally faithful to Christianity because right in their hearts they have embraced these long-held Catholic and holy traditions. And yet these people were tested right up to the end. So let's see how God comes to their rescue. Hello friends and on this channel Great Saints we in a sense take a journey upstream to look at the lives of the Great Saints to try and receive some knowledge from them to apply in our days for our particular difficult times. So do join us in this journey and then as Saint Francis of Assisi used to say may the Lord give you his peace. In our first miracle and this is how God sustains Padre Pio. Now Padre Pio had been under investigation for a long time already and it had reached all the way up to the highest levels in the church the inquisitors and even the pope in the church they were now in a fierce debate over the future of padre pio and this was going to be whether padre pio was going to be cancelled or erased from the collective me memory now in this meeting the tide had been turning slowly against padre pio and the Pope himself was about to issue a judgment, judgment and this was likely going to be against Padre Pio. It was in fact a secret meeting known only to those who were present in the meeting. It was held behind closed doors. There was a Swiss guard, armed guard, barring the entrance to the doors. When suddenly in, in walked through these closed doors walked a young Capuchin friar. They said he had a slight limp and he was wearing long sleeves. He walked right up to the Pope, he knelt, knelt down in front of the Pope and ki kissed the Pope's slipper and then said, Holy Father, what you are about to do for the sake of the church, do not do. Then very respectfully, the, prior, the friar got up and he left. And with this, pandemonium broke out in that meeting room. Because how had he got past the, the armed guard? Through the closed doors. And the Pope did some investigations and very humbly he recognized this was a miracle in fact of biolocation. And so only because of that Padre Pio's reputation was saved and we know of Padre Pio today. A second similar case and this one happened to a Mother Angelica of the EWTN television network. And she was the foundress of this network when she was over 58 years old she founded the network now mother miriam tells us that mother angelica was suffering from a very old injury it was a severe injury at the time which had need a, needed a tricky surgery and in fact there was a good chance that she would not be able to walk again so because of this, Mother Angelica made a promise that if she could walk again, then she would start a monastery for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and also with a specific aim to, to be able to pray of being able to pray for racial healing in the lands. Well, the surgery went ahead. It was a partial success because Mother Angelica after that could move around. She was mobile, but only with the assistance of crutches and with special brace on that leg. Otherwise she couldn't get around. We could say God had heard her prayers and spared her partially, not completely. Well, despite all of that, Mother Angelica was unstoppable and she continued to operate and EWTN continued to grow well. However, Mother Angelica was a little outspoken and for this she won a lot of respect from some good people but she also won some enemies within the church for calling out their laxity and their ambiguous preachings and some of these enemies were even amongst the most powerful the cardinals in the church and there was a cardinal of los angeles who had now become radically opposed to mother angelica and her television station and wanted to have them both shut down so the situation was now dire this cardinal, um, who was so violently opposed to EWTN, he had now gone to Rome and he was there to ensure the closure of EWTN. He was there involved in meetings with the top people. It appeared that Mother Angelica actually had no chance. 
that her life's work was just going to be silence, come to nothing. And then unexpectedly, there was an intervention, we could say a divine inter intervention, because exactly at that time, this little woman arrived to meet Mother Angelica. And she said that she had a prophecy for my Mother Angelica, that she was to take this brace off her leg. This brace which Mother Angelica had worn for so long, and without which she would be unable to walk. Sure enough, Mother Angelica gave it a try, the brace came off, and there in front of everyone, they said her leg straightened up, it unwound. She was healed there right in front of them. Well, you can imagine on the next program, the live program, Mother Angelica was not just walking around, but she was dancing around for everyone to see, right there live on television. During that very tense time, a woman came to pray for Mother Angelica at the monastery here, following her live show one evening. And following that prayer session, Mother's legs were healed. For the first time in decades, Angelica could walk and even dance without crutches or braces. You want to dance? Like that, well, let's dance. <laughs> She always thought that healing was... And this, of course, made it all the way across the seas to the Vatican itself, to Rome itself. And because of that, her cancellation never came through. So God had intervened.